Hello everyone, welcome to DIY Hub, where we turn small ideas into wonderful big things. This metal cup of mine has a broken handle. Maybe we'll throw it away and buy another cup, but I just had a clever idea. First, I'm starting with a standard spark plug. This will be the core component of our new tool. Next, I take a section of red electrical wire. Using wire cutters, I meticulously strip a segment of the insulation from one end. After stripping the insulation, I split the copper wire core into two parts and then twisted them tightly. I twist one stripped and around the very top of the spark plug, making sure it's tight. A secure connection is paramount for efficient electrical conductivity and tool stability. I use needle nose pliers to firmly crimp the wire around the terminal enhancing both mechanical and electrical integrity. Finally, I trim any superfluous wire material to streamline the assembly. To prevent short circuits and ensure user safety, I meticulously insulate the connection point on the spark plug using red electrical tape. The wrapping technique ensures complete coverage and adherence, reinforcing the assembly. I cut the tape precisely to maintain a neat and functional profile. This insulation is a critical safety measure, preventing accidental contact with live electrical components during operation. Next, I'm grabbing a terminal block. I remove an individual brass terminal from a terminal block by unscrewing their retaining screws using a screwdriver. This terminal is designed for secure wire connections. This small piece is perfect for creating a secure attachment point. I'll take two small screws and connect them together to make a small, sturdy terminal. I'm going to carefully attach the small brass terminal to the very top of the spark plug, ensuring a tight connection so that current can flow effectively. This will be the main point where our heating element connects. Now for the handle, I'm using a simple wooden dowel. I mark the center on one end with a marker. This helps guide my drill bit. With the dowel secured in a vise, I utilize a power drill with an appropriate drill bit to bore a primary hole into the wooden dowel. Consistent pressure and speed are maintained to ensure a straight and clean bore. Post drilling. I thoroughly clear the sawdust and debris from the hole and surrounding surfaces to prepare for the next step. I'm now switching to a step drill bit to widen the opening and create a slight chamfer at the top of the hole. This wider opening is designed to precisely fit the ceramic base of the spark plug, ensuring a snug and stable fit when it's inserted. With the hole prepped, I carefully insert the spark plug assembly into the wooden handle. This provides a comfortable grip and insulates the user from the heat generated by the spark plug. I want to be firm and stable. To permanently secure it, I'm applying a few drops of super glue around the base where the spark plug meets the wood. This adhesive cures rapidly, forming a solid bond that prevents rotation or dislodgement during operation. For an extra strong bond and to fill any small gaps, I sprinkle baking soda over the super glue and then add more glue. This quick bonding technique creates a robust, almost instant adhesion, making the tool durable and safe. I repeated the process of adding glue and baking soda until the spark plug was completely secure. Leave a comment and let me know which country you are watching from. It's great that we can connect and chat from all over the world. 
Finally, I cut off the excess glue with a utility knife to ensure a clean and professional finish. For our heating element, I'm repurposing a small battery. I'm disassembling it to extract the carbon rod from inside. I'm carefully cutting away its outer metal casing with pliers. After completely removing the shell, I will use a box cutter to cleanly remove the plastic layer on the battery. Then I remove the metal positive terminal cap from the top of the battery, then pliers to gently pull out the carbon rod. This carbon rod is crucial because it has excellent electrical conductivity and can generate significant heat. To ensure maximum efficiency and conductivity for our tip, I'll clean the exposed top of the carbon rod thoroughly with paper. To make our carbon rod tip precise and effective, I'm securing it into a drill chuck. Then, using sandpaper press against the spinning tip, I'm refining it. This sharp point will help concentrate the heat, making our soldering more precise. Now, to complete our tool's wiring. A section of red electrical wire is meticulously stripped of its insulation and then twisted to form a secure connection point. I attach one end to a small alligator clip crimping it tightly with pliers for a secure connection. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any interesting ideas coming soon. After that, I insert the sharpened carbon rod into the brass connector on our spark plug tool. I use a screwdriver to tighten the connector, ensuring the carbon rod is held firmly in place and makes good electrical contact. To supply power to our device, I prepare a dedicated power cable. I begin by stripping the insulation from both ends of a white electrical wire, exposing conductive strands. These strands are then meticulously twisted and folded back to create robust connection points. Subsequently, I attach two blue-handled alligator clips to each end of this prepared white wire. Each connection is securely crimped using pliers, ensuring optimal electrical conductivity and mechanical stability. This completed cable will serve as our primary power connection to the battery, guaranteeing efficient energy transfer. Now for the moment of truth. I have my 12 volt battery set up, ready to power our homemade soldering iron. I connect one of the blue handled alligator clips from our prepared white cable to the negative terminal of the battery. The red alligator clip, connected to our spark plug tool, is then securely attached to the positive terminal of the battery. I've placed two razor blades on a piece of wood for our demonstration. 
Watch closely as I bring the sharpened carbon tip of our spark plug soldering iron into contact with the metal. See how quickly it begins to heat up and glow? This is the power of concentrated current. The heat generated is intense enough to melt the razor blade almost instantly, showcasing the effectiveness of this simple DIY tool for high heat tasks. Imagine the possibilities for small metalwork or repairs. I use scissors to cut off a small piece of razor blade. This razor blade will be the solder for my next project. Let's try it again on this small metal cup. As the carbon rod touches the metal, you can see the immediate reaction. The metal heats up rapidly and begins to melt, demonstrating the tool's ability to tackle various metal surfaces efficiently. See how the concentrated heat from our tool begins to melt the metal, allowing me to carefully create a hole. It's incredible to see a simple spark plug and a carbon rod transform into such an effective heating and cutting device. This DIY device proves that with a little creativity and some basic components, you can achieve amazing things. Our incredible multifunctional soldering iron, ingeniously made from a simple spark plug and a few household items. This DIY device proves that with a little creativity and understanding of basic principles, you can achieve amazing things and create practical tools. If you enjoyed this project and found it inspiring, please give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below telling me what other unexpected tools you'd like to see me create. Don't forget to subscribe for more fantastic DIY ideas. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.